state regulators are investigating power outages that keep happening in the same places. If they've got other neighborhoods that have been out more than 13 times this year, then go take care of them first. Aurora City leaders who've argued over the level of gang activity there now say they're on the same page after Donald Trump brought Aurora onto the debate stage. Neighbors divided over a plan to build a mountain bike park with a lift. And for women who need a lift, at their lowest in life, there is a nonprofit filled with women who have been there and know the way out. We're gonna support their work together because you don't just watch, because this is next. Investigators in Larimer County have arrested a guy for the Alexander Mountain Fire. They say he posed as a firefighter to get into restricted areas while that fire was burning more than 9,000 acres and destroying dozens of homes last month. 49-year-old Jason Hobbies charged with first-degree arson, impersonating a peace officer, felony menacing, and false imprisonment. The sheriff's office says he's an employee at Sylvandale Ranch nearby and that before and during the fire, he impersonated first responders like police and firefighters, both to keep people off the ranch and to trespass into restricted burn areas. But on several occasions, Hobby stopped travelers in the area in a Chevrolet SUV that was made to look like a law enforcement vehicle, called people out on traffic stops and pointed weapons at them. He bypassed road closures to access restricted areas during the course of the Alexander Mountain Fire and represented himself as a wildland firefighter. Investigators have not said how they believe Hobby started the fire or why they think he did it. They'd previously said that fire likely started at a campfire ring on the mountain. When you are left in the dark, figuratively and literally powerless, do not underestimate the power of complaining. Excel customers have complained to us here and to state regulators about sporadic power outages. And today, state regulators, the Public Utilities Commission, started a new investigation. Our Marshal Zellinger introduces us to some of those customers trying to reclaim their power. When a business relies on power, losing the lights can cause anxiety, panic, and terror. The taglines for this arcade game about being left in the dark. All the games, lights, and point of sale machine operate on electricity, of course. Caitlin Braun works at Players Pub on Broadway and is also a board member on the Lincoln Broadway Community Neighborhood Organization, which complained to the Public Utilities Commission about several unplanned Excel power outages between Lincoln and Broadway from Bayod to 3rd. You look across the street when you're shutting down because you have no lights, they're on, business as usual, everything's fine on that west side of Broadway. and. This four blocks on, on the east side of Broadway is just like dark again. I get calls from my neighbors across the street that say, hey, I see your power's out again. Can we do anything for you? Blake is also on the neighborhood organization board and lives in the impacted four blocks. Last year, I think we had about six outages. This year, we've had 13 outages so far. We're here this morning to discuss the possibility of the commission opening an investigation. This morning, the PUC opened an investigation into outages following 250 customer complaints since May 1st. Some examples of these extend from the Sterling Ranch area in Littleton to Grand Junction and Palisade from Boulder down to central Denver along the Broadway and out into Plattsville. What we would like is to for them to upgrade the infrastructure. An Excel spokesman counted 10 sustained power outages for the Lincoln Broadway corridor this year, four caused by animals, three by equipment failure, one by weather, one for construction, and the most recent unknown. But Excel did change some fuses. Excel does have a claim form to try to get reimbursement if the outage was due to negligence, not equipment failure or acts of nature. For Caitlin, even filling out the form seems powerless. Businesses buy in bulk. They don't have itemized receipts for, you know, three pounds of meat and here and there. It's pretty easy to look up a day's sales, though, and say, hey, last year, the year before, we made $1,000 on this day. Can we pay us back 1000 bucks?" Excel and their answer to me never blamed flaming digital bird carcasses, by the way, as you saw in that video game. Complaints also came from the Applewood Business Area in Jefferson County, University Hills in Happy Canyon in Denver, Louisville, Boulder, and Sterling Ranch in Littleton. I have Excel's answers I'll be in including in my digital story about why they think those outages happen. Louisville is <laughs> the only one they don't really know at all of all those areas. But it comes down to negligence or is it just typical, like, it happens from time to time. What do we know about whether Excel actually pays out those claims or whether it's a fool's errand to put in that paperwork? Well, I talked briefly on the phone with a business owner of Boulder who says he's filled one out, has no idea what's going on with it. It takes at least 90 days. There's mm -hmm. an investigation that Excel says it does in the paperwork. Mm -hmm. But if it's not because of negligence, 
I don't think it's any, any money ever gets paid out, but that's something I want to look into is like, do, can you, what's the effort and can you ever get money when sure. the power goes out? Marshall, thank you. So Excel is warning about potential outages in western Colorado tomorrow because of high winds and the fire risk. Excel says that customers in Mesa and Garfield counties could see outages tomorrow. Excel is changing the settings on their power lines in that area. So if a tree or something else falls on the line, the power should be off until crews can clear the line. Excel says when that happens, it obviously is preventing a wildfire, but those outages typically take longer to resolve. Excel spokesperson said they are not planning preemptive blackouts on the western slope tomorrow, but that would be on the table if conditions get worse. Excel has been under scrutiny for months for shutting off power to 55,000 customers back in April. Many of those customers and county emergency managers complained that Excel did not adequately communicate where those shutoffs would happen and how long they would take to get the power back on. City leaders in Aurora who have offered conflicting messages about Venezuelan gang activity at apartment complexes are now presenting a united front to combat what they call, quote unquote, overstated claims, claims echoed by Donald Trump on the presidential debate stage last night. And you see what's happening with towns throughout the United States. You look at Springfield, Ohio. You look at Aurora in Colorado. They are taking over the towns. They're taking over buildings. They're going in violently. These are the people that she and Biden led into our country. Former President Donald Trump mentioned Aurora twice in last night's debate against Kamala Harris. Trump and conservative media organizations have spent weeks amplifying claims that the Venezuelan gang trained to Atagua has taken over Aurora. Mayor Mike Kaufman, City Council Member Daniel Jarinsky, the city manager and the police department have joined together in a joint statement to dispute those claims. Their first joint statement since this issue surfaced more than a month ago. They're saying that Train de Aragua's activity has not taken over the city and that the gang's presence is isolated to a few specific properties. Jarinsky had accused Kaufman and Aurora police of a cover-up as the three of them presented conflicting messages to the media and the public. That apartment complexes and, 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 and areas of our city are being taken over. This is what we believe. I, I think in, uh, not in the known property, but there are others that, that we're concerned that criminal elements have uh, uh, pushed out the property manager uh, and, and are extorting uh, the tenants uh, in the building. The Dallas well. Street property. We're standing out here and I can tell you that gang members have not taken over this apartment complex. Last two statements there, both the mayor and the interim police chief. We're talking about that same Dallas Street property. Sometimes conf conflicting statements have come out of Aurora within hours of each other. In this joint statement today, city leaders reiterated that 10 suspected TDA members have been arrested. We've previously reported that. And they acknowledged with one voice that including TDA activity, crime has significantly affected those properties in question. A teenager out looking for locations for homecoming photos was shot in the face and police say it was a councilman from Mountain View who did it. Mountain View is that tiny town sandwiched between Denver and Wheat Ridge. The shooting happened Tuesday afternoon in Conifer off Pleasant Park Road. The Jeffco Sheriff's Office says it got a call about two trespassers. The teenager says he and a friend hopped a fence at a house to ask the homeowner if they could take photos on the property. They couldn't find the owner so they returned to their cars where a man named Brent Metz pulled up next to them. Investigators say Metz fired his weapon, hitting the 15-year-old, uh, the 17-year-old in the face. According to the arrest affidavit, Metz then said, oh blank, my gun just went off. The teenager has serious injuries. The town councilman is facing charges for assault, menacing, and reckless endangerment. For women in the Denver area who are at their lowest point in life, feeling hopeless in the face of addiction or mental health issues, homelessness, unemployment, there is hope. And it's the Empowerment Program. Our Word of Thanks microgiving campaign this week is supporting that decades-old nonprofit in our community that helps women put their lives back together. Some of their participants are coming from the criminal justice system, some from life on the streets. The Empowerment Program works with them across every area of their life, physical health, mental health, Housing, education, steady employment helps them to build a future when success and stability might seem out of reach. And here's what sets this nonprofit apart. They turn no one away. No long wait times, no difficult qualifications to get in for people who are sometimes just at rock bottom and need that very first step, which comes in the form of personalized help from Coloradans who have lived experience coming back from the brink. 
Scan the QR code on your screen or text the word thanks to 303-871-1491 to get that link to donate to the Empowerment Project. Your millions of dollars in microgiving proves that even $5 adds up fast. So as always, I'll match the first 50 donations of five bucks to get us rolling. And more than 3,000 of you have signed up to simplify your giving with a monthly donation to the Word of Thanks Fund. And what that means is that we have started your recent microgiving campaigns with more than $20,000 a week in donations. That's become the floor for your weekly giving. That's incredible. Use the same QR code or text to get there. They've always said that the number will surpass it at some point, um, and, we're th and we're there. The annual climb for 9-11 victims has new meaning this year, honoring all the firefighters who lost their lives years after the attack. We want to help these guys find another place if we can. Yeah, they, they like the idea of a, of a big mountain bike park, just, you know, not in their backyard. That's next. Colorado is about to lose nearly 16,000 businesses. And before you say, thanks, Joe Biden, you should know that all 16,000 of them were started by the state's most prolific and somewhat suspect entrepreneur. Last year, we told you about Marcio Andrade, who kind of went buck wild when the state dropped the business filing fee to $1. Andrade registered, then sold off 15,600 fraudulent businesses from a foreign IP address, all registered to the same street address in North Glen. The family that lived at the home said they didn't know anything about it till the FBI came a knocking. Andrade claims he worked with a registered agent who lived at the address but moved without telling him. The state's reached a deal with Andrade. He has to dissolve nearly all of the businesses cre he created and pay $75,000 in penalties. He's also banned from registering any new businesses that don't comply with state law. The dude is persistent, as is the heat, Kathy Saban. Yes, but we got a break today, Kyle, and temperatures in the low 80s this hour and maybe some beneficial rain tonight. Unfortunately, the heat returns tomorrow along with fire danger. It will be increased due to the increase in wind. We started at 57 today, the high at 86, nowhere near the record of 97, and we're in the mid 70s this hour. But the wind will be a big player, and that's going to amplify the fire danger tomorrow as the front begins to move off to the east and we see less available moisture. Already gusty winds to the south and east of Denver. The red flag warning in effect for Denver and much of eastern Colorado throughout the day on Thursday for low humidity and just tinder dry conditions. So we're watching as storms cross the foothills. Yeah, we're going to see a brief heavy downpour, but we also might see a little bit of thunder and lightning and wind and with dry conditions. That's not something we want to see. If you haven't seen rain yet, you've got a few more hours where we may see that rain and then things are going to quiet down. We'll look for for lows overnight in the mid 60s and you'll see these storms race across the sky tonight between now and about nine and then clear out. We're mostly sunny, hot and dry tomorrow with our high at 92 and a red flag warning, a cooler Friday, but a great weekend for football, sunshine in 80s for the Rocky Mountain showdown and for the Broncos when they take the field on Sunday afternoon. It has been 23 years since terrorists attacked New York City and America more broadly. Nearly 3,000 people lost their lives when the two planes crashed into the Twin Towers. Two other planes crashed into the Pentagon in a field in Pennsylvania. To honor those who died that day, more than 300 firefighters in Denver climbed the equivalent of the 110 stories of the World Trade Center. This was the 20th annual climb in Denver. But this year, they had a new reason to scale the stairs. The number of firefighters who have died from a 9-11 related illness has surpassed the number who were killed on that actual day. It's staggering, really. You know, they, uh, they've always said that the number will surpass it at some point, um, and, we're th and we're there. And Illness, cancer, disease in the fire service, is, it, is a, it is a thing that is affecting our firefighters in the United States. Many of those 363 firefighter deaths from 9-11 related illnesses attributed to cancer. Jefferson County commissioners will soon decide whether to go forward with plans for a, a big new mountain bike park. Neighbors hope to change their minds tonight. A new mountain bike park with a downhill lift has been in the works just outside Conifer for nearly four years now. Neighbors don't universally love the idea. We heard from folks with a variety of views as Jeffco leaders get close to deciding whether this project can proceed. Shadow Mountain Bike Park is the first lift-assisted bike park in Colorado. So it's a proposed downhill 
bike park. Yeah, not like a ski lift. So we are looking um, about 15 to 18 feet in the air. I am Katie Rothman. I'm a local resident as well as chief marketing officer of Shadow Mountain Bike Park. My name is John Lewis. I'm on the board of directors of Stop the Bike Park. I've been a resident up here for 25 years. We're not against having a bike park. We think it's a terrific idea. There's opportunities all around this area to, to do mountain biking. We'd like to see it move somewhere that makes a little more sense and isn't gonna totally change and destroy a, an existing neighborhood. But the only thing you're really gonna see from the sitescape is the 15 foot to 18 foot uh, lift going up and our lodge. All the other uh, trails and everything else will be below the trees. The main issues are um, traffic and safety, wildfire, wildlife, vegetation, water, um, drainage, and sense of place. How can a thousand more vehicle trips per day make this better? We could see, though on common, a thousand cars coming up the mountain. This is a curated experience with only 264 reservation only parking spots. We live in a state that is demanding more recreation and more level of conservation of our land. In this case, it happens to be mountain biking, but it really is a park. Our mission ultimately is to conserve the property the way it is. So that's what we're going to try to do if we, if we manage to uh, defeat this thing in the next few days. Public comment in front of Jeff Coast Planning Commission is about to start, and then that hearing is going to continue tomorrow night when they're expected to vote. Then it will go to the Jefferson County Commissioners for a vote on October 1st. We are back here with your feedback next. Thank you. This week's Word of Thanks microgiving prog program supports a nonprofit that's been in our community for nearly 40 years, helping Coloradans, women primarily, write their personal comeback story. Come back from the depths of addiction, mental health challenges, homelessness. The Empowerment Program also works with Coloradans looking for a second chance to come out of the criminal justice system, help with housing or finding work, mental and physical health care and education, whatever they need to get from that tough spot where they are to the place that they want to be in life. They have seen tremendous success over the decades. You can scan the QR code on your screen or text the word thanks to 303-871-1491 to join me and all of the other Coloradans in donating to this nonprofit that is empowering Coloradans to lead their best lives, to write that comeback story. Your weekly Word of Thanks donations will be added to all of the Word of Thanks Fund monthly donations, where people donate once, set it up monthly, and it goes to every single nonprofit that we feature week after week after week. A note from Joanne, uh, just to thank you that we mentioned the firefighters who have passed away related to 9-11 related illnesses, which has now surpassed the number of firefighters who died on that day. Joanne notes that her brother was to FDNY and worked there in the pit where so many men and women got sick trying to save lives on 9-11. A text from Boulder County. When talking about power outages, be sure to mention the numerous people who rely on Excel for electricity for medical equipment and oxygen. They say get a generator. Great, but they're still waiting on generator permits. That perfectly encapsulates why we've been spending so much time talking about these planned power outage issues because folks need that power for medical stuff. 